Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the nitrogen mustard drugs. Okay, right. So we've seen the nitrogen mustard, also known as mechlorephamine and chlormethine and HN2. We've also seen melphalan, also known as L-phenylalanine mustard or LPAM. Now let's see another example, and this next drug is the most commonly used of all the nitrogen mustard drugs. Okay, so the next drug is a drug known as cyclophosphamide. Okay, so let's see the structure of cyclophosphamide. So it has to have this same group that we've seen already, basically. It has to have these two uh, chloroethyl groups in, because those are what are utterly essential for the function of uh, the drug. Okay, so again you have this nitrogen here with these two chloroethyl groups coming off this nitrogen. Okay, so here is one chloroethyl group, here is the second here. Okay, so we've got the two chloroethyl groups coming off the nitrogen. Now the question is, what is this other group that comes off the nitrogen? Well, in the case of cyclophosphamide, what you have is a phosphorus atom, as you might have guessed. And then this phosphorus atom is double bonded to an oxygen, and then it's also involved in a, bo in a ring, basically. It has two more bonds, because phosphorus atoms form five bonds, so it's got three so far, so it needs two more. And it forms one bond to a nitrogen up here, and one bond to an oxygen down here. And then the other three members of this ring are carbon, so it's a six-membered ring again. Okay, the normal size for rings. So this is the cyclo portion of cyclophosphamide, like this. Okay, and off this nitrogen, you'll then have a hydrogen. And off all these three carbons, you'll then have two hydrogens. So let's complete this structure by adding on hydrogens, like so. Okay, so this now is the structure of cyclophosphamide, and this is the most commonly used of all of the nitrogen mustard drugs. Okay, and the next nitrogen mustard example I want to give, and don't worry, there's not too many more, there's two more, in fact, examples of nitrogen mustards I want to show you the structure of. So I'm showing you the most important ones. Okay, so the next one I want to give is a drug known as iphosphamide. Okay, and this has a very similar structure to cyclophosphamide. It's just slightly modified. So, again, um, well, actually, this time it doesn't have the two chloroethyl groups in exactly the same positions as we've seen so far. Instead, it does have this nitrogen again, but off this nitrogen, it only has one chloroethyl group. Okay, so here's this first chloroethyl group, and then it also has a hydrogen off this nitrogen. Then it has the same ring as we saw in cyclophosphamide. Okay, so here's this phosphorus atom again, and it needs two more bonds to an oxygen and to a nitrogen. And then it has these carbons making up the other three members of this ring. Okay, like so. Right, so let's put the hydrogens on the carbons, but this time we're not Repeat, we are not going to put the hydrogen on that nitrogen because I've told you that for the function of these nitrogen mustard drugs, you need two chloroethyl groups. So the other chloroethyl group has to be somewhere, so it's basically off this nitrogen here. So here is the other chloroethyl group. So again, this drug does indeed have two chloroethyl groups, as it must have to have. Okay, so this is the drug iphosphamide, and we'll do one more. So the last drug I want to tell you about is a drug known as chlorambucil. Okay, so these are the five nitrogen mustards that I think you should know about. So we've had the nitrogen mustard, chlormeth, uh, sorry, chlo uh, mechlorephamine, uh, or chlormethine. Uh, we've had uh, melphalan also known as L-phenylalanine mustard. We've seen cyclophosphamide, we've seen iphosphamide, and finally, we're going to see chlorambucil. So chlorambucil will have this nitrogen again with the two chloroethyl groups on. So we're back to conventionalism now. Two uh, chloroethyl groups off a nitrogen. Okay, right. 
And then what's this other group that comes off the nitrogen? Well, basically, in Chlorambucil's case, you have a nice benzene ring, so it's looking kind of like phen uh, the melphalan drug, okay? But this time, what you have is you then have three methylene groups here, one, two, three, like so, and each of these methylene groups has hydrogens off it, like so. And then finally, right at the end, you then have a carboxylic acid group here. Okay, so this is the drug chlorambucil. Okay, right. So now we finish finished with our examples of nitrogen mustard drugs. What we'll move on to is the mechanism by which they work to um, alkylate DNA. So, basically, they attach onto guanine residues within the DNA. Okay, so just to remind you of the basic structure of DNA, uh, what we have is two strands which are complementary. So we'll start off with one strand here. So here, this is the phos uh, sorry, the sugar phosphate backbone here. Okay, and I've just realized I haven't actually shown the fifth carbon particularly well. Bring it down like that so that you've got a corner there to, in fact, start the picture again. It's getting too small now. So I'll start the picture again. Right, so the structure of DNA. So the structure of DNA is that you have the sugar phosphate backbone, which is made up of these ribosugars with phosphate groups. Okay, and then off each one of these ribosugars, you have an organic base. So for instance, let's say we have the organic base A for adenine here. Then this will be polymerized with another nucleotide down here. So phosphate groups there. Here's the ribosugar again. Okay. And let's say the organic base down here is a guanine organic base. Here, G. Okay. And then the other strand, the other strand runs anti-parallel, but all of the uh, organic bases, okay, in this other strand will be complementary to the organic bases in this strand. So you'll have, sorry, not a C there, that's awful, thymine in here, and then you'll have cytosine in here, complementary to guanine. Okay, and then the sugar phosphate backbone will be running anti-parallel, basically. So you'll have the ribosugar like so. Here's the fifth carbon of the ribosugar, the phosphate group, and then it will be connected up to the next ribosugar here, which will be linked to its, new, its organic base as well. Okay, so here's the next ribosugar, and then it will have its fifth carbon up here, and then a phosphate group. Okay, so that's just a reminder, basically, of the fact that you have these two strands making up DNA and that they are running anti-parallel to one another. So in, what, in this one, the uh, phosphate groups are running this way. In this way, direction, the sugar phosphate backbone is running the other way. Okay, right. These nitrogen mustard drugs are going to target guanine residues within, well, not residues, guanine nucleotides within the DNA. Okay, so let's begin to see how. So we will see this for the most simple nitrogen mustard. We'll see it for the nitrogen mustard, or machlorephamine, or chlormethine, or HN2, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so here is the structure again of uh, the nitrogen mustard. So it has these two chloroethyl groups off this nitrogen atom, and it also has this methyl group off this nitrogen atom, and we'll see its mechanism of action in the next video.